I'm Joanne from the Full Spectrum Centre Limited, an award-winning wellness and vocational training centre, and you're listening to the Full Spectrum Wellness Podcast. This show is all about physical, mental, emotional and spiritual wellness, and it's for people who are looking to improve their overall health and well-being. Each week, I'll share with you all the positive takeaways, tools, techniques and tips that I've gathered in both my personal and professional wellness journey that will help you to look, feel and be well. With a dose of motivation and meditation to keep you going, I'll be joined by a few friends who will be sharing their insights along the way too. Welcome to episode 10 of our Full Spectrum Wellness Podcast. I'm so happy and excited to be back here with you for our 10th episode. Can you believe it? Now today, Sunday the 13th of November, is World Kindness Day. In today's world, negativity often seems to take centre stage. Sometimes it's easy to focus on the negative and to allow the toxic events we see around us and in the news consume us. But I've found that one of the easiest and most effective ways to combat all that negativity is to focus on good, specifically on kindness. The concept of kindness goes way beyond just being nice. It includes being generous and considerate. Giving of yourself in some way is a part of being kind and it involves some sacrifice, no matter how small. It doesn't require reciprocation and doesn't expect anything in return. We've all heard the platitude that kindness is contagious. However, these old sayings tend to be built in truth. Kindness tends to have a ripple effect. When you give generously of yourself to another, you brighten their day. You may even inspire hope in their world. And this can lead them to be in a better frame of mind in order to then do something kind for someone else in their life. In other words, they pay it forward. You never really know how far reaching one act is going to be. Now, we're often disconnected in this fast paced modern world. You never know what somebody else is going through. We all have our battles to wage and being kind to someone else might just be the thing that helps them to keep pushing forward during a tough time. Plus, when you're giving towards others, there's genuine acts of kindness often strengthen bonds. Showing grace towards others sets a good example for those around you. There's always someone watching. And this is especially true if you're a parent. So let your children see you giving back. This will help to increase that ripple effect that I talked about. And it teaches a valuable lesson. Doing good for others with no expectations in return simply feels good. Kind acts can improve your mood And it's been shown that helping people actually light up the pleasure centres of the brain and releases endorphins, the feel-good chemicals. And in fact, this phenomenon has a name, helpers high. Being kind offers so many benefits. In a world where genuine connection seems to be lacking and everyone is in such a hurry, kindness may just be the cure to bring people together. Now, if you were to look up the word kindness in a dictionary or online, you'll find that there are countless definitions. What seems to be a common thread between all of them is that they go way beyond simply being nice. They involve being caring, generous, helpful, considerate and respectful, amongst other qualities. This characteristic of being kind can also be considered a skill. Sometimes it doesn't come naturally. You can become more aware and proactive in the amount of grace you grant to others. It just takes a little practice. Being good to someone reminds us that we're not alone. There's a bigger world way beyond us and beyond our immediate circle. When you extend a gesture of goodwill, you're putting something positive out into the world. You're strengthening bonds and improving someone else's situation in even just a small way. Kindness inspires hope which often goes on to create even more benevolence and decency. The entire concept of kindness centres on our humanity, and it's part of what makes us innately good. Creating a practice of kindness requires intention, 
So you must commit to doing at least one purposeful, kind thing each day in order for it to become a habit. But don't worry, this doesn't have to be difficult. Once you begin making graciousness a habit, you'll start to feel that helper's high, which will spur you on to want to continue making this practice a part of your life. Once you begin to share acts of kindness on a regular basis, you'll become conditioned to do so. So start with small things like smiling at strangers you meet or giving close friends and family a hug. Check in on a friend who might have been struggling lately. And if you're at the supermarket and you're queuing, just allow someone to go ahead of you. I like to thank the cashier. I look at their name badge and I thank them personally. And you'd be surprised at how many people are taken aback when I do so. You could offer to help someone bear some of the burden of their heavy workload. You could give a generous tip for exceptional service. You could donate to your favourite charity in somebody else's name. But being kind doesn't have to cost a lot of money or time. You can find little ways to engage in this practice every day. The key is to get started and to keep going. And the returns on your investment will likely be great. Being generous with loved ones and the people in our lives can truly do a lot for our own mindset. And it can also benefit our health. Expressing gentleness and goodwill towards yourself can be more difficult than sharing these gifts with those around you. We often neglect to do positive things for ourselves or to take care of our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual well-being. However, it's important to remember how doing so can improve our life. Self-kindness is truly one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself. We're so often taught that it's selfish to focus on our own needs, and this couldn't be further from the truth. Caring for ourselves is necessary if we want to have enough energy left to give to somebody else. Self-kindness goes way beyond self-care. It involves forgiving yourself and being generous with yourself. Being kind to yourself is made up of all the same types of acts of kindness you would show to somebody else. It really is beneficial to stop and think, would I treat somebody else this way? Would I speak to somebody else this way? If the answer is no, then remind yourself that you deserve a similar kindness. Being kind to yourself matters for so many reasons. When you neglect your own needs and treat yourself with harsh judgment, you're creating emotions inside yourself that are very similar to those that would manifest in someone else you were treating poorly. Just as a neglected or ridiculed child would build a sense of poor self-worth, resentment and anger, So do you when you don't show yourself generosity. You'll begin to wear yourself down. Instead, self-kindness renews your soul and your overall well-being. Learning to be more compassionate with yourself leads to feeling better in so many aspects. It can lessen depression and anxiety. It teaches you what you need to feel confident and provides you with the necessary coping skills and resilience to handle life's obstacles more successfully. Having mercy on yourself gives you the energy and ability to be there for others without feelings of resentment and overwhelm. When you're more charitable with yourself, it lets you be more successful in meeting your goals because you'll feel encouraged to try rather than defeated or critical. The messages we give ourselves really do matter. As you can see, being kind to yourself is just as important as being kind to others. It may even be more critical because doing so gives you the strength you need in order to freely care for others. Depleting your own energy isn't beneficial for anyone. Being kind to yourself can be hard. It's not something many of us grow up learning to do. We're often so busy looking out for others that we forget our own needs. However, as you now know, self-kindness matters and it's worth the investment. Now, one of the most impactful and fun ways to spread kindness is to do so with random acts. And you've probably heard the term random acts of kindness. This is when you do something unexpectedly for someone else, simply to make their day or to ease their burden in some way. It's believed that the term began with a menu quote by Anne Herbert that read, practice random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty. Random acts of kindness, sometimes seen as RAKs have become a movement in recent years. No action is too big or too small. In fact, some of the most meaningful examples tend to come in the form of simple gestures. You don't have to spend a lot of money or make an elaborate plan. The one requirement is the act is unexpected with nothing desired in return. 
One of the most absolute easiest yet most wonderful things that you can do to show kindness to others is to give them a smile. As long as it's genuine, a grin can provide a number of positive results. You can truly make a difference in someone's day or you can change the course of events for the better. So if you see someone looking stressed or a little sad, flash them a smile. This one small gesture conveys quite a lot. It shows that someone cares and is interested, even a stranger. You never know what someone else is going through. This may just be what they need to get through their day. In addition, it activates the portion of the recipient's brain that processes sensory rewards, providing them with a sense of contentment. And for you, as the smiler, you release a hormone called oxytocin, which actually strengthens your heart wall muscle. So it lengthens your life. Smiling really is contagious. An unconscious automatic response in the brain is responsible for this phenomenon. When you smile at someone, they can't help but smile back. That smile can then cause positive feelings to flow within the person. The act of smiling itself also stimulates that neurochemical response that I talked about that causes people to feel happy. So it's true, when a person smiles, neurotransmitters that make people feel good are released. These brain activities generated by smiling work together between participants in a way that strengthens attachment. These actions combine to create a symbiotic effect, meaning one that works together or interdependent. The actions rely on each other. Both you and the recipient benefit from the process of smiling and the release of feel-good neurochemicals, the activation of the brain's reward centre and the resulting feelings of warmth and contentment. All this leads to strengthened bonds between people, even for a brief moment between strangers. When you smile at someone, you're letting them know you have good intent. You send positivity in their direction. This can lead them to smile. And when they do, they benefit in multiple ways, as we've already discovered. What you may not realise about smiling, though, is how it can keep your positive mood going. Even after you've walked away from the recipient, they may maintain their smile and all those good feelings that come along with it. So you see, smiling really does make a difference. It seems like such a small thing, but it really does matter. So go out there and share your smile and see how good it makes you feel. Now, a question for you. How often do you stop to acknowledge your gratitude throughout the day? I bet it's something you don't do very often. It's easy to take the good things for granted. Sometimes we forget just how fortunate we really are to simply have the basics we need to survive. Other times we neglect to be thankful for our friends and family. So acknowledging gratitude on a regular basis can be a powerful display of kindness. Gratitude is all about being thankful and expressing that appreciation to others. Some think it's an emotion or a feeling, while others believe the concept is actually a practice or skill you can improve on. I think both are correct, really. You can feel grateful for your blessings, and it's also possible to practice gratitude by doing things to remind yourself just how fortunate you truly are. You can also express your thankfulness to someone else, and this is a powerful way to spread kindness. If you begin a practice of gratitude, you can almost guarantee you'll reap some benefits. Taking time each day to acknowledge your blessings lifts your spirits. It helps to get past the negativity bias we all have. Instead of feeling down about what's going wrong in your life, you'll gain a new perspective and a more realistic picture. Showing thankfulness for others and to others multiplies the benefits gained. It spreads joy, builds bonds and strengthens relationships. Showing that you're grateful to another encourages that same behaviour. The recipient of your appreciation may go on to show more gratitude to someone in their own life. Gratitude has even been shown to be good for our physical, mental and emotional health. So starting a simple gratitude journal is a great way to get into the habit of acknowledging what you're really, truly grateful for. You can write it on an actual paper journal of your choosing or you can use an electronic method. It doesn't really matter as long as you take some time each day to write down three to five things for which you're grateful for. The repetitive nature of this exercise is where the power really lies. You'll reap more benefits by engaging in the practice regularly. You can also offer a simple word of thanks the next time someone does something nice for you. 
Taking a bit more time to tell a loved one why they're special to you is an incredibly beautiful way to show them that they matter. If saying the words out loud is intimidating, send them a card or a letter instead. Kindness can so easily take a backseat in a world that's so busy and hectic. Sometimes we all get caught up in our own lives, attending to what seems to be the most important. One of the ways we can forget to be kind to others is through a lack of attention. This happens a lot in conversation. We're often thinking ahead to what our response will be or letting a multitude of other concerns interrupt our thoughts. So one way to truly be kind is to listen attentively to your friends and loved ones. It shows them you care and value them. Listening is just one way your actions can be kind on a daily basis. Another is to forgive. We often hold grudges against others who've hurt or offended us in the past. Sometimes it's kind to both them and ourselves to let that resentment go. It can be quite liberating. Today, I'd like to share with you just a few simple ways that you can be kind to yourself. And these might just help you start a practice of showing yourself grace. The first is to invest in yourself. This can be an investment of various types of resources. Now, you may think of money when you hear the term investing, but you don't need to spend a penny in order to value yourself. Time is a resource many of us don't give ourselves. Schedule a few hours in your calendar each week to do something special just for you. You could also invest energy and effort into yourself by doing something like taking a few extra minutes each morning to meditate or spending extra time to do your makeup. Whatever makes you feel good. If you have money to spend, consider splurging on yourself in some way. Buy yourself a beautiful outfit or give yourself permission to join the gym. The second way is to compliment yourself. We are not always very nice to ourselves. It's often easier to see the negative things about us than to revel in the positive. So making an effort to change that is an important step towards self-kindness. When you catch yourself silently saying something mean about yourself, stop and reframe that message. Turn it around in a way that's more positive, or at least gentler and kinder. Ask yourself if you'd ever say those words to a friend or loved one and then commit to not repeating them to yourself. Another good way is to show yourself some grace is to make a list of your positive qualities. This is a simple but powerful exercise. And the third way is to take one small step. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut and it's during these times we tend to practice poor habits and think negative thoughts. It can be difficult to get past such a pattern. But one of the easiest ways to move forward is to just do one small thing towards improving your situation. So research the available classes at your local community centre or college and choose some options you might enjoy that fit your budget and schedule. Consider your health goals and write down some small changes you can make to move you towards them. Investing in your self-improvement is motivational and empowering. These are just three simple steps that you can take to show yourself kindness. They can provide you with the jumpstart you need to get going on this journey. And you'll soon see the difference that showering yourself with positivity and kindness can have on your mindset and your mood. Now, being kind to others can become a habit that becomes part of your daily routine. It just takes a little practice. There are some specific things that you can do to spread kindness and most don't even require money, but some do. So let's look at three ways you can be kind to others. The first way is to think small for big impact. Now, I'd like you to think of small things that you can do that will make a big difference in the lives of others. When you're beginning a new habit, it's best to take the easiest route until these actions become more ingrained in your life. A simple smile, as we've already said, to someone who's frazzled is probably one of the easiest yet most impactful things that you can offer. There are lots of other tiny gestures that mean a lot. So as we've said, offer to let the person behind you in the queue at the supermarket go first. Praise someone for a job well done. Invite someone to lunch or for coffee if you know they've been going through a rough time. These types of actions don't take much effort and they truly do speak louder than words. The second way is to give your unique gifts. Part of being kind to yourself is knowing what makes you special. There are some things only you can give. So consider the ways that you can make a unique difference in somebody else's life and then take action to make that happen. 
If you have a special talent like playing a musical instrument or cooking, then find ways to share that gift with others. Volunteer to play your musical instrument at the local nursing home or bake a cake for your child's school event. If you're particularly a good listener, then offer to be a sounding board for a friend that's in need. There are so many ways you can use your particular skills for kindness. And the third way is to go out of your way. Some of us have more limited resources than others, and I absolutely understand that. However, if you're able, it's great to go out of your way and to give big sometimes. If you can afford to do this financially, then do so. You could make a donation to the local charity shop, or you could help an individual or family that you know personally who is struggling. Perhaps you can afford to be generous with other resources. Take some time to gather all the stuff you've not been using and donate it. Bring groceries to someone who lacks transportation and isn't mobile. People always appreciate it when someone goes out of their way for them. These are just three ways that you can be kind to others. There are countless other things that you can do. So make a list and start looking for opportunities to put it into action. While it's great to offer assistance and provide kindness in any of the ways that we've talked about, sometimes our help may not always be what the recipient most needs. And it can even be unwanted in some instances. Receiving assistance can be a sensitive subject. You don't want to hurt someone's feelings or overstep the boundaries. So asking how can I help you can demonstrate sincerity and that you truly want to do what's in the best interest of the recipient. When you ask for input, you're showing that you're willing to listen and do what the person most wants or needs. You're not simply helping in order to feed your ego or out of obligation or for some ulterior motive. The question puts their needs and desires front and centre. Asking for help is hard for some. There's a stigma in our society when it comes to being vulnerable. When you ask someone how you can help them, it's you who is taking the first step. The recipient doesn't have to carry the emotional burden of approaching someone for assistance. When they feel confident in your sincerity and your willingness to help, the pressure will be taken off them. If you truly want to know what someone needs, the direct approach is usually best. When you ask, you'll know what the person really wants. Guessing can lead to an awkward moment for both of you. In addition, there's really no point in putting forth the time and effort and other resources to help in a way that may not be needed or appreciated. Your kindness will be more efficient and more useful when you ask, how can I help? Asking how you can help someone is such a wonderful gesture for all the reasons we've talked about. Genuine kindness is almost always appreciated. But asking this one simple question goes above and beyond. It demonstrates respect and sincerity. An incredibly powerful question to ask yourself as you pursue this journey towards becoming a kind of person is, who can I help today? You may be surprised to discover the wide array of opportunities that present themselves to you simply by considering this one question. By seeking out one person to serve each day, you're looking outside of yourself with purpose and intention. And you can almost always find at least one person to extend kindness to when you take proactive steps in this way. Remember, kindness is the glue that keeps the world together and to be kind to you today too. When you're happy, you will infuse kindness into every conversation, every gesture and every encounter that you have. That kind of magic spreads like wildfire. So let's start a kindness revolution and see what can happen. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. I hope you found the discussion and the tips covered really helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this episode, please do leave a rating and a review and share it with your friends and family. Pop along to our website at thefullspectrumcenterlimited.com and join our self-care and wellness newsletter club. You'll receive our free 55-page printable self-care guide and workbook. Well, that's all for this episode, but I really look forward to seeing you next week. Take care and bye for now.